if I had to start again from zero, this is the one automation that I'd sell. It's really simple. It works in almost any industry and it's actually really easy to sell. I'm talking, of course, about an ultra personalized email system. I'm going to be walking you through make.com, email systems and NA10. NA10, as you can see, is a little bit more complex, um, but I'm going to talk about pros and cons, how I got into selling it and essentially the best way to sell it. But first off, what problem does this solve? It literally solves the biggest problem in any business, which is demand generation, especially when you're starting out or even just any sort of business who sell to other businesses, they need to be able to generate leads. Starting a business, I've seen, you know, my own business, I've seen this from a whole completely different perspective. But when I was working for companies, you saw it in a different way. And you, I, I didn't really have that perception of it as I do now. It was like, I worked in big companies. So we had marketing teams or, or I was in the sales team and they sort of worked together to try to generate the leads for the salespeople to sell. Now there's two ways. There was a marketing team who would go out, they'd do campaigns, whether that be email campaigns, ad campaigns, um, I don't know, anything, right? To try and get leads in. We'd go to events. So we'd go down to London, go to Excel in the, the big, the big hall in London and we'd do big tech events and, you know, we'd have a stall there and people would come out to us, speak to us about what we do. We'd take their name, email, try get them that would be a lead okay we'd have a lead or you do the I was a salesperson so I had to be constantly prospecting part of my role was new business development so I'd have to be constantly you know cold calling emailing LinkedIn messaging stuff like that to try and generate leads so I could um, sell my companies or the company I worked for services and get paid a commission out of that and that was sort of how it worked as a salesperson, sometimes you can be a bit more lazy and you can just sort of go after your own accounts that you already have instead of having to find new business. But in companies like that, you'll find that you're normally rewarded more heavily when you find new business because you're bringing in extra revenue for the company, new brand new revenue, normally a lot more revenue than something that you're just upselling to an existing client. So the thing is, most businesses, they have this problem. They have the problem that they are that their salespeople might be too lazy or they're a solopreneur or they've got a very small team and they've got a lot on their plate and they don't really have time to do the lead generation or they're not doing it cost effectively or they're not doing it effectively at all. And, you know, it's the main part of a business is cash flow. You need cash coming in and pipeline generation. You need constant pipeline to go after. So this system solves that problem, solves the biggest problem. And it could be for enterprise, like I've just mentioned, bigger companies or even very small companies and anyone in the middle it can be for. So this is what I started with on make.com. Um, it was, it was pretty, it's pretty, really, really simple. Okay. Um, I'd get all the leads, I'd get my list and I'd put them into a Google Sheets. Normally I'd get my list from LinkedIn. So I'd then fix the names or format the names of those people. Because as you can imagine on LinkedIn, there is um, a lot of people who put like weird stuff in their names, right? Like, I don't know, just weird stuff. So you want to get rid of it because you're going to be actually finding those emails automatically. Now, if you've got a name that you're inputting into an email finder that has really weird you know, maybe just like emojis, let's just, for example, call it, say emojis, it's not going to be able to actually find that email. So you could be losing 10, 20, even 30% of your, your people. Um, probably not that many, but 10, 10%, maybe five to 10%. So you just format the names using this and then we use any mail finder or I personally used any mail finder to find the emails for that person. And then we send it to a web book because the problem with make.com is that it times out after 45 minutes. So you can only do a batch. And normally I was doing, you know, quite a high amount, big volume. So it would time out, it would get annoying. So I had to figure out a way. I looked in the API docs for any mail finder and they had a thing called a callback URL, which essentially in the same node, we'll find the email and then send it to a web hook. And then this was the web hook. So the data will come in here. And this doesn't have a timeout function. It would set for immediately as date, date, data arrives, but data would arrive one by one. So it wasn't really timing out. It was doing one, 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 one really quickly, right? So the data would come in. If it has an email, it would then verify the email, research the prospect, create an email, pass that JSON that the Anthropic module would create, and then add it to the campaign. Really simple. It's really, really simple um, automation that, I was using myself to get clients. Now I'm going to do another video shortly, probably tomorrow, um, on exactly the 
uh, how I got into selling this automation specifically and I'll go through my story. It'll be a short video, but why not? Let's just have a bit of story time. And uh, essentially that's that's what it did on, on make.com. Now, people who've been subscribing to me for a long time will know that I came up with this idea. Well, I didn't come up with this idea. This is what I used to sell when I worked for an enterprise client. These automations wouldn't just be built like this. You wouldn't just hand over stuff like this. You'd hand over an application. That's what it was. You'd give them a front end app and on the back end would be a really nice automation, but they wouldn't see that because the thing is they don't care about that. So I did a video um, how to make automations like SaaS or how to sell automations like SaaS. Um, I was the first person in the AI agency space to do it. So if you see anyone else, you've seen anyone else's video, just know that I was the first person to do it. You can go and um, compare. I don't know, every time I mention it, I always talk about how I was the first person and I sound like a broken record, I know, but I'm going to carry on saying it anyway because I want everyone to know. Um, but yeah, I ended up using Bolt, which was, it came out maybe September, October time, or at least that's when I found out about it. And I was like, shit, I can really create front end apps for people. So the workflow looked a bit different. Um, essentially what they do instead of using LinkedIn, Apollo was a lot easier because it has, um, sorry, I wasn't showing you. It has uh, Appify and you can scrape leads using Appify from, you can scrape leads of Apollo from Appify. So what they do, they've had the front end app. I don't know. Oh, look, I have it here. I, have it, I still have it pinned into my thing but they put in uh, their search url that they've done on apollo the campaign id the workspace if they had multiple and then the industry as well just because in apollo we'd want to make sure that the industry is correct that they're reaching out to so i'd basically compare the research output so it will say they're in this industry to the one that Apollo gave because Apollo data wasn't always correct. And then I just have a webhook here. So they'd press start automation. That would ping the webhook. The Appify scraper would run. The Appify webhook would collect the data. And then the third scenario would be this and it would send everything into here for the personalization to start. And they didn't have to see the back end. And I was actually doing really well with this automation when I started sending like really well. Um, I think I played around with like 750 quid, I think the first time I sold it. And then I just went up and up and up. And I think the most, well, I know the most I sold it for was 5K one time. After, and before that and after that, the main one, you know, that I agreed on was three to three and a half K. I've actually got a video on my channel selling it for three and a half grand. Um, and that was probably the best time. Even now, that was the best time of my career uh, selling this. It really was doing AI automations. It was the best time was just selling this automation. It really was. And with the front end up, I would get on a call and it was like I was doing three, four, five, six of these a month and earning really good money. And I was like, fucking hell, this is incredible. And then I changed things a little bit, which I think I'm now debating whether I even should have. But no, I should have. It's... um it's going really well now and i'm building that sort of monthly recurring revenue now um to the point where i was at you know 10 20k a month um which is good that's the that's the make.com one i haven't been on make.com in a long time so this is actually bringing me back it's making me it's bringing back some it feels quite nostalgic you know this is the one i built now and this is the one i personally use now things are still changing in this like constantly changing and the main thing is the prompts for the copy but essentially it does the same thing. It gets the leads from the sheet. It will clean the, the names. It will find the email. It will verify the email. I'll use another catch-all thing to see if it's a catch-all. We'll, we'll check the catch-alls. Um, I'll update it in the sheet if it's not been verified or not been found. You know, the same sheet over here. So if anything was to go wrong. Oh, I don't have it set up right now, but. Essentially, we'd have a filter for if processed doesn't exist and it will go through the ones that haven't been. I'll put that on now before I forget. And you can also see what I do if you're um, interested. So processed doesn't exist, um, then it will do it. So basically, if anything was to go wrong, it would start off where it finished, if that makes sense. Uh, and then we'll add the URL to a LinkedIn sheet. All the ones that haven't been found or haven't been verified will add that URL to a, to a sheet, a separate sheet, because that's consistently getting run through Phantom Buster to connect with these people. And then when they connect, I get it on my phone and I go, hello, thanks for connecting. My name's Ben, buy my services now. Anyway, if it's safe and if the email is found, then it will go over here 
and it will check the MX record. It's a nice free thing. Have a look at that and just use that. Um, we're just checking the MX record to see if it's Outlook or Google. If it's Outlook, it will go up here and it will add it to the sheet and it will say, right, okay, you're <clears throat> Outlook, I don't want to reach out to you um, because you're very hard to get into at the moment and I want my domains and email inboxes and IP to have the best reputation ever, so I don't do that. Instead, I go down here and I prepare the data for the research. Essentially, what this looks like is that full name company name title location and then the row number i pass through as well then we'll research the email then after that i'll have an ai step that's just checking that they need b2b because sometimes i've had replies from the likes of uh, confused.com paypal some huge companies but they sell b2c they've said oh great email you've clear you've nailed the prompts here and you're leveraging ai really well however if you were leveraging AI that well, you'd know that we sell to um, consumers, not to businesses. And really, this system's only for B2B. So it will do a check and then it will go and create the email. Then it will add it to the campaign. You know, if I've got loads of different variants, it will do it here. Well, I'll obviously put that in there like so. Bosh, it will go in there. And we'll just check to see... Um, We'll just put it in the, in the in the campaign if I'm testing different variants and offers. Um, but yeah, this is a personal one. If I was to sell it to someone, it wouldn't quite be like this. Well, I suppose it would. I'd sell it as this, um, as if I was selling it as a one-off. But if I'm, which is what I do now, I manage the whole infrastructure because, again, I've got so many different automations that are included in this infrastructure, like domain checking for blacklists, IP checking for blacklists, uh, a research generator that's like a will generate research on on request. Um, what else have I got? LinkedIn, you can reach out on LinkedIn with it, stuff like that, right? Loads of different things. The only thing I'm going to be changing in this is I'm going to train my own or fine tune my own um, GPT and put it in here to make it a lot cheaper for me, a lot cheaper. And it's actually going to be trained on about 50 to 100 examples of exactly how I speak. Someone in my community mentioned it, which sort of reignited uh, a thought that I'd have I'd had ages ago um, about doing it and the thing is those examples that you're going to create or I'm going to create are going to take a long time they're going to take a long time to do it it's going to be really annoying um, so I'm just going to split it over a week and just do so many a day write emails out like I would write them and then give that to the the fine-tune model to train and get used to and know my tone of voice and know how I speak and then you don't have to give it a load of examples to to create um, emails how you want it you can just have it fine-tuned and trained like you so if you've got this far in the book video then that's a really cool thing that uh, you will um, you should know about yeah but yeah this thing is is so easy to sell and it's because it has a clear ROI not just in terms of money but but time this will save so much time and the thing is I'm selling to enterprise companies at the moment. I'm implementing this into huge firms that are international. And the reason being is because they don't have to spend six figures on marketing anymore. They can literally just have this. I'll run it for them, have leads landing in the manager's inbox to distribute across their team. There's huge companies. Um, I don't know if I... I'm, I don't know if I can mention it because I'm not going to, but um, there's one, there's a huge one that I'm hoping to mention uh, at some point that is not as much a household name, but it's, it's a big name. It's a huge name. So, um, yeah, it's just got, it's got a clear ROI. It's um, universally needed. It saves so much time. It's great for businesses and because of how complex this whole infrastructure has become for me, um, it's much easier for me now to just to manage it because there's so many different moving parts. It could all be integrated into like a software as a service, but a lot of it is still needing my sort of hands-on support with it. So that's what I do. It's still quite easy. It's not as easy to sell, um, but it still is easy. Um, because you know, when you were selling, when I was selling it as one offs, people were like, Oh yeah, I can own it. I can, use it. that was a real clear ROI. This is a little bit getting positioned as a lead gen agency, which is not what I want to be because I'm AI and automations. Um, but I suppose I'm not as much an AI automations agency as I was before. I'm now 
I've now used my knowledge in AI and automations to create this productized service that I can sell. And I think that's really where the money's going to be at in the next few years. Instead of AI and automations and spreading yourself too thin, it'll be much easier just to create a productized service and then sell that to a specific industry. Or in my case, I can sell this to any industry, which is why I recommend you guys um, selling this as well. So yeah, that's it. If you're thinking of starting a business like this, then absolutely my advice would be to fucking go for it um don't overthink <clears throat> don't overthink it you know start simple and then you can start building to it which is what's great about this automation create something valuable um make it even more valuable make it universal and it just becomes an absolute cheat code if you want to see the exact systems and infrastructure that i deliver then i'll break it all down inside my school community so it's all inside there but other than that i hope everyone has a fantastic weekend and i'll see you all in the next video